All right, let's take a look at study link 6.1, multiplication and division number stories. So these um, diagrams here are going to help us sort out these stories and find an answer to the question here. So number one, Trung wants to rearrange his collection of 72 animals on a shelf in his room. How many equal rows of nine animals can he make? So we need to decide what's going where for the numbers they give us. So he has a collection of 72 animals. That sounds to me like animals in all. All of his animals he has is 72. And <clears throat> this says how many equal rows. So it's asking us how many rows. So that's what we need to figure out. And then it tells us um, equal rows of nine animals. So each row is going to have nine animals. And then this is going to be division. So we have 72 divided by nine is equal to, and I'll let you figure that out. And please remember to write, not there, down here for the answer, please remember to write the unit, which is rows, because you're answering the question with a unit. The next one, let's see. The average porcupine has about 30,000 quills. Those are the little, little pointy things in a porcupine. About how many quills would four porcupines have? So four porcupines there. And each porcupine has 30,000 quills. So this, I'm going to let you figure out the rest on your own, but this is going to be a multiplication problem between these two numbers, your factors, and again, you can do the rest of this on your own. Don't forget your unit is quills in all. Okay? And then finally we've got this one about uh, calculators. So there are 168 calculators for the students in the school and a box holds eight calculators. Well, that just gave us some information, right? Um, a box holds eight calculators. How many boxes is the question? And then calculators in all, this is for the whole school, so that's the calculators in all. And again, this is gonna be a division. And this one, you may have a method you use to figure it out. Uh, in my class, we've been working on rectangles to solve this, so I'm gonna use that method, which you may not have seen before. So we have 168 divided by eight, which means we're gonna have a rectangle with an area of 168, and one of the sides is going to be eight. So one side is eight, and the area of this whole thing is 168. So we're going to multiply our way up, and I'm going to start. You can do it in whatever way you want. I'm going to start with um, 10. So I'm going to make a side that's about 10, and that means I'm going to have 8 times 10 equals 80, and that would give me an area of 80 for this part. And now I'm just going to do that again, make another one of 80. And that's going to get me up to about 80 plus 80 is now 160. And we're trying to get to 168. So we're almost there. So if we're going to 168, how much more do we need? Well, we only need eight more, so that would be eight times one equals eight, and then we're there. So 10 plus 10 plus one is going to give us 
21 and that is our answer but <clears throat> don't forget to put the unit there as well so the answer is 21 but what does 21 mean well that's your unit to hold the calculators and then we've got um, some decimal addition and subtraction here and my reminder for you here is decimal points need to be lined up neatly so if I've got six and seventeen hundredths my decimal point needs to be lined up and now I have my ones place and my tenths place and my hundredths place all lined up and now I'm all set to add this up and the decimal point stays there and I'll let you finish the rest of that on your own same with the subtraction I have 12 and 13 hundredths and my decimal points need to be lined up and then I'm all set and I'm going to do all of my trading first so I can properly do this and now I can just subtract 11 minus 4 will finish you off for the ones place. I'll let you do that bit on your own. And that is all for Homelink 6.1. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.